these sorcerers of consciousness, as I'll call them, are occult practitioners. They use the knowledge and methodologies of occultism to accomplish their agenda. Now, the word occult is very misunderstood. I want to make it very clear that I am not speaking out against or condemning all types of occultism. Occultism is a body of knowledge that is not generally understood or known about. It is simply knowledge. It's a tool to be used by the practitioner. And what we need to understand is just because it's occult does not mean that it is evil. It is simply information about how consciousness works, about how we work. And it is known by some and not known by others. So as a tool, you could look at it like any other tool. For example, a hammer. You would not consider a hammer as good or evil. A hammer simply is a hammer. It is a tool. It is what the wielder of the tool does with it that makes it good or evil, that makes it being used for good or evil. So I could take a hammer and I could go out onto the street and strike the first person bystander on the street that I see and kill them, which would be a completely sadistic evil act. That doesn't make the hammer evil. That makes my intent for wielding the hammer evil. I could then, I could take that same hammer and go and use it to build a shelter for a homeless individual. And I would have put an act of goodness forward into the world. So it isn't the tool itself, you know, that's good or evil. It's the consciousness of the individual that is wielding the tool. And that's what the occult is. It is simply a tool. It is a body of knowledge. And when we get into the word, you look at the word occult, it comes from the same root as the word ocular, meaning related to the eye or related to vision. And that is exactly what the word occult means. The word occult simply means hidden. That which is hidden from sight, hidden from everyday availability or sight, uh, we cannot perceive it because it is cloaked, it is veiled. That is what occult is. All occultism simply means hidden knowledge. Researcher Ju Judith Moriarty made this statement, the greatest conspiracies are not actually hidden. They are just fragmented into different pieces like a puzzle right before our eyes. So this conspiracy that I'll be talking about, this global hegemony of control, this global manipulation scheme, is right in our face and we can't see it, most of us. It is just beyond the limits of ordinary perception because it is occult knowledge that most people have very little, if any, awareness of. So it's fragmented into different pieces, but it's right in front of us in plain sight, hidden in plain sight, so to speak. Woodrow Wilson described this manipulation. He said that we have come to be one of the worst ruled, one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in the world. No longer a government of free opinion, no longer a government by the conviction and vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and duress of small groups of dominant men. And you would think that an individual like this would understand how the government had, had come to be structured. These are, this section I'm just going to lay out, I'm not going to go into great detail about how all of these groups are interconnected and related and their histories because that information is there to be uh, gleaned from a n number of researchers who have done intricate, detailed work, uh, made a life's work of uh, understanding uh, these groups and their connections. I'm simply going to lay out an overarching idea of who the hidden occult controllers of this planet are and uh, give you a general idea of uh, the, the types of organizations that they work through. So any organization that is globalist in nature, that is working toward a world government, toward greater centralization of power, think tanks that are interconnected and working toward common 
worldwide goals and worldwide laws. I simply refer to these organizations as globalists because that's what, in fact, they are. Organizations like the United Nations, the G8, G10 family of nations. You have the round table think tanks such as the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg Group, the Royal Institute of International Affairs, the Club of Rome, and many others. Uh, uh, and the bottom right there you see uh, a, a collage of different members of an organization known as the Project for the New American Century. Um, <clears throat> these are globalist think tank organizations that are working toward greater power in fewer hands. That's the main thing to keep in mind. Centralization of power and organizations working toward that aim. World politicians are simply puppets for these <clears throat> greater organizations that are trying to centralize power more and more. If they're on a scene level, they are probably not very high up in the hierarchy. They are controlled and they are simply performing their tasks as they are laid out by their masters, by those who really are pulling the strings behind the scenes. But world leaders that are in scene positions of governments are certainly involved in this process of global manipulation. Military <clears throat> Military leaders, strategists, planners at high levels, very involved in this manipulation. H much higher up in this hierarchy and uh, organizational structure are globalist bankers, such as the Rothschild banking dynasty, the Rockefellers, and many other <clears throat> financial institutions that are really calling the shots behind uh, what we see playing out at governmental levels throughout the world. <clears throat> royal family members of, of all nations, uh, the, the, the royalty of England, uh, Spain, the, uh, uh, the Netherlands, Saudi Arabia, and many other countries. So royalty is not simply figurehead. It is involved in these organizations. It does direct the agendas of these organizations and it does have intricate interconnections with the banking dynasties uh, that are really calling the shots behind what we see playing out at the scene level within government governmental structure. Religious and new age ideology leaders certainly play a role in this to cover the spiritual aspect of the deception. Media moguls that control the information that we are presented with. And again, I'm, it's not my intent here to go through all of the interconnectedness between these organizations, uh, nor to present a all-encompassing um, tapestry of how they work. It's simply to give you an overview that this is the, the body of individuals and these are the organizations that they work through. The research is out there and has been compiled by many researchers and you could look into that uh, for lifetimes if, if you so chose. <clears throat> Theodore Roosevelt made this statement, behind the ostensible government sits enthroned an invisible government, owing no allegiance and acknowledging no responsibility to the people. Former president making this statement. You would think, again, that someone like this has some knowledge of how things are really structured in the power centers of the world. And uh, he's telling you right there, out in the open, that uh, there is an invisible government that owes no allegiance to the people. Now, the, the, the body of knowledge that these sorcerers have available to them, where it is derived from, is what many researchers have called the mystery traditions. The mystery traditions of consciousness. Again, it is not to say that this body of knowledge in and of itself is evil. It, the sorcerers that are doing this work of manipulation, this great work to hypnotize and enslave humanity, they are the inheritors 
and the perverters of this body of knowledge. It is not theirs, it does not belong to them. They happen to come into contact with it through their perhaps bloodlines, their involvements. Okay? And they are taking this awareness, this knowledge of how the human consciousness works and how it can be influenced. And they're using it for their own egoic, ego-identified worldview and benefit. So they're the inheritors of this knowledge and they're the perverters of this knowledge. They're using it in a perverted, irresponsible fashion to serve their own egoic will. And this is the, the, the ancient secret society networks all throughout the world <clears throat> that have their roots back as far as ancient Egypt and Babylon and even farther back. That's, they had this body of knowledge. They continue in many ways to preserve this body of knowledge. Some of them for a positive purpose, some for a negative purpose. So it isn't any one given secret society that's orchestrating and controlling it all. There are very responsible and good-hearted individuals in these groups, and there are very dark-hearted, uh, manipulating individuals in these groups. It is simply that the body of knowledge about human consciousness, that there, it's called the mystery tradition because it dates so far into human antiquity, we don't really know when it was codified and came into uh, uh, its existence as, as we understand it. But it is the knowledge of how human beings operate. You know, our physiology, our uh, emotional makeup, our, psyche, our psychology, etc. How the human psyche works. And that is who is really controlling the, the whole game from behind the scenes are the people who have this information, have had it for thousands of years, and are using it in a completely perverted way to manipulate people for their own egoic benefit. So that's clear, that's crucial to keep in mind and to keep it clear that, again, it is not the knowledge of the mystery traditions or the mystery traditions themselves that is evil. It is how imbalanced consciousnesses are using that knowledge to control people. So this is one of the structures of secret societies. In this case, it happens to be Freemasonry. You see that it is a compartmentalized, pyramidal structure. Okay? It's hierarchical. So it's a top-down scheme. Higher levels of knowledge in fewer people's hands as you get closer to the top. And then as you get down near the bottom, there's many more people that comprise that group, but they're, in less, they're less in the know than those smaller groups at higher levels. So it's simply a process of compartmentalization and the hierarchical structure of knowledge. So you want to get to this level, you have to play the game to get up to this level, and then you're initiated into that knowledge. And it is my contention that this is the entire reason that this knowledge has been perverted in the way that it has. This is not a democratization of knowledge. This is elitism when it comes to knowledge. This isn't giving knowledge out to everyone freely regardless of who wishes to have it. The total distribution, the egalitarian distribution of knowledge would have assured that this knowledge never became as perverted as it has become. But instead, because there is this hierarchical and compartmentalized structure within the networks that do have the knowledge of the mystery traditions, this is, this is the reason that we have seen such irresponsible use of that knowledge. <clears throat> Researcher Phil Rockstro described this process this way, and I think it's a great statement. The authoritarianism inherent to this structure, he's talking about the compartmentalized hierarchical structure, the pyramid structure of uh, secret society networks. This authoritarianism in inherent to this structure is antithetical to the concept of the rights and liberties of the individual. 
Most individuals bound by secrecy-prone hierarchical values will over time lose the ability to display free thinking, engage in civic discourse, and even be able to envisage the notion of freedom. That, that's what it is really all about. So you, you put people into this idea that there is always someone beneath you and always someone above you, and the idea of freedom slowly goes out the door with that regimented, compartmentalized, and hierarchical worldview. And that is why, uh, very much like the, the, this pyramid of manipulation diagram, secret societies have also fallen into that way of looking at the world and power being concentrated into fewer and fewer hands and that knowledge being used ultimately in an irresponsible way by those who have it. So 